What's up, y'all? Some of you asked me to do a build video on this rifle, and I'm sorry, I haven't really gotten around to it. It's nothing too special, but I'm going to go over it nonetheless really quick. Hopefully, I make this an under 10-minute video because I want to explain why I put everything on this rifle because this rifle... Honestly, I've had a little journey with this rifle. I really thought that I liked the carry handle with the prism up top. Turns out, no, I had swapped it all up and went with something different, and it's amazing. I love it. It's going to stay this way. So first off, PSA. This is a PSA rifle, the 20-inch A2 Classic. So you can either get the Premium or the Nitrided. This one is the Nitrided. It's going to come with an A2 buttstock. It's going to come with an A2 pistol grip. So the A2 stock, which I'm not familiar with A2, I'm not familiar with any fixed AR-15 stock. And the A2 stock is a tad bit longer than the A1 stock. And thank God one of you guys told me, you know, to check out the A1 stocks. And I've loved it ever since. Especially having the prism up top and or even a magnifier. Magnifiers don't have the best eye relief, but they do have a tad bit better eye relief than I guess you could say a prism or something like that because a prism depending on the prism you got to be all the way up on it depending like an a cog or something like that so this is an a1 stock with a stock adapter i don't know about you guys but i personally carry my rifle a lot and this one's usually the rifle that is honestly usually slung to me whenever i'm carrying the rifle and i really like comfortability and that's me personally especially if i'm carrying it for a long time <clears throat> i don't want it to be jabbing into me i don't want it to keep messing with the sling and having to do it so it took a lot of practice and figuring out what i like to really get this rifle comfortable and my other rifles too now that's why i got the stock adapter because it kind of just like holds the rifle right in place no matter if it's on my back it's in my front Whatever the case, it's still really easy to shoulder and get up on it. It's really nice. I really dig it, and they're only 20 bucks. The biggest budget thing is going to be the safety selector, which I really dig. This is a UTG safety selector, so the cool thing about this, in which most safety selectors are all like this anyway, is you can swap the ear to left or right side depending on which handed you are. So if I was right handed, it would be kind of hard to hit on the safety right here, so that way it just makes it that much easier. You can put the ear on the other side. Next thing is I got me a Radiant Rapid charging handle. There's nothing to really talk about there. These things are so popular and rightfully so because they just work. Up top, we got ourselves a Magpul flip up M voice, I guess we'll call that. Backup iron sight system here. And then we got a Juliet from Six Hour, three times magnifier. It pairs up really well with this E. ESPS 3-0 EOTech. Now EOTechs are pretty expensive and it is what it is, but they work really well. And you got a lot of other holographic systems out there that work really well too, but I just personally love EOTechs. So I talked about the safety selector, talked about charging handle sighting system. Next thing is the CMC trigger. This one is the three pound trigger pull. Yeah, it's been a while since I got this guy. So CMC actually sent me this trigger along with a few others. Yeah, they, they sent me a few triggers and this was one that I really like. It's a three pound pull. Um, CMC is very popular in the competition trigger realm. They work really well and it's a CMC, you know. Uh, you know, Palmetto State Armory makes their own single stage triggers too. And they, while they are amazing, but there's a clear difference between the two. And honestly, dude, like you get deals sometimes of these CMCs on PSA for like a hundred bucks. Just as much as the, I think the PSA's single stage trigger is about 80 bucks. So $20 more, you get a pretty dang good trigger system. 
And if you don't have a good trigger system in your rifle, I don't know what you're doing either. I'm gonna talk about the quad rail. The quad rail is a Midwest Gen 2 drop-in quad rail. Uh, they, these run for about 200 bucks. It's amazing. The cool thing about this is I didn't have to take up I, I didn't have to take off the delta ring or the front sight post. I'm a front sight post whore, and I really like the look of the front sight post on a rifle. That's just me. I know some guys do away with them. Kind of old technology, and with this system, you they say it messes with the barrel har harmonics, which I haven't really seen that, but some nerd out there tested it out for me, and if they're saying that's what it does, that's what it does, but I still get one inch groups with the right ammunition. And while this guy is a 20 inch one in seven twist rate, and it does do really well with Sierra Match Kings, but it also does pretty dang good with just like white box, um, Winchesters, uh, PMCs, all that stuff. You get about three to five inch groups at 100 yards, and that's pretty dang good if you're just target shooting or whatever the case is. Moving up, we got the cloud defense rain. Now, I'm all about budget stuff, and you're probably thinking like, dude, this guy is, that's pretty expensive. It's a $400 flashlight worth every penny. I'm so glad I bought this. This is not buyer's remorse or anything like that. Talking about the beam intensity is out of this world. That's where it really outshines Olight and the durability. This thing just feels like a tank compared to an Olight. While Olights work great, I don't have an issue with them. These are, these get used a lot more by guys who are more serious and they really hold up to the task a lot better than Olight. While you see Olights in Ukraine and stuff like that, I would still trust this guy more if you're really wanting to rely on a white light, especially if you don't have nods. And I don't have nods, so it's white light for me. And um, this is my M16A4 build and clone build. And I know it's not a complete clone because it doesn't have an ACOG and it's got a few other attributes to it that's not exactly clone correct, like a Knight's Ornament quad rail and stuff like that. Oh, and I also forgot to mention the Knight's Ornament foregrip. You know, this might look like I'm just trying to clone it out and stuff, but I've really came to like this thing. I get that perfect C clamp and I can still push this rifle up against stuff. I really like this foregrip, it's amazing. And another thing that I like about the Midwest handguard here is that if I'm really looking for that comfortability and carrying my rifle, I can either go short, which it's set for short right now, or I can take this guy out and put it long. And the reason why I have it in short is just for the simple reason of being fast on a rifle. And if I really want that comfortability in carrying the rifle for a long distance, I can easily just take this guy out and put it right here. And then I have a more comfortable way to carry the rifle. And if I want to be fast, I can easily just slide it in here. The only thing I really have inside this rifle because everything else is stock from PSA is the BCM bolt carrier. I have broke a Palmetto State Armory bolt not a bolt carrier, a bolt. And it broke right at the cam. Look at that. Looks like we sheared right at the cam there. That happens with AR-15s a lot. Thank God we got more of these. Like if I'm gonna really rely on this rifle, I really wanna make sure it keeps working. So I put a BCM bolt. I did a lot of research. They're not too expensive. They're not crazy up there, but they're really reliable. And a lot of guys use them. And I haven't really seen any bad reviews on a BCM bolt carrier. That's why I went with BCM. Um, so let me know what you guys think about this build. up a little bit. Oh. I dropped the gun. Instead of putting it on my shoulder, I didn't let it put it on my shoulder and I let it go. And it went down. It's very reliable and it's more than capable of hitting its target at distances. Let me know what you guys think about it and if you guys have any questions and or looking to build a similar rifle out, let me know. I'll help you guys out. All right, y'all. Peace. Be safe. God bless. I'm out.